Okay, so the doc is about to come in so we can ask some questions. This is how we're looking. The back looks really good. So, new video and kind of exciting. So, officially today, well, maybe yesterday, I don't know, as, as far as like the actual day count, but officially around today, um, we are seven weeks post-op from a LiPo 360 and arm LiPo. So, some exciting things are going to happen today. So, Number one, I do have an appointment to go see the doctor. They're just going to look at everything, you know, talk about the progress, make sure everything is how it should be, and also tell me what I'm clear to do. So it could be exercising, it could be yoga, it could be stretching, Who, you know, it, it, it just really could be anything, but I'm super excited because this whole time, y'all, like, I've just been so like tight and like I have knots everywhere like I would love to start doing my stretching and my yoga again like I miss it so much if you guys don't know I love stretching like I would stretch at least twice a day like once when I wake up once before I go to sleep so I'm really like you know like so tight right now like I, I just need a good stretch now I have talked to a few females who have had lipo before and they say even once you're cleared since you haven't stretched for the last 40 something days it's gonna feel like a little tingly or burning sensation i'm just gonna push the fuck through <laughs> i'm just gonna push through the pain because i've been through worse okay but also i just need to stretch i need to get back to you know like doing regular things so super excited about this today we are officially seven weeks and also throughout this video i'm gonna show you guys the progress photos of like day one today now you know and um just answer more questions about the surgery and what to expect if you decide to get it and what to be scared of what not to be scared of all of those questions that you guys have been asking me the past few weeks and just a conclusion of what i've been going through the past seven weeks so that will be in this video and i'm super excited to show you guys how i look right now because i look amazing <laughs> I look amazing so anyways yes okay let's get this started I'm just waking up I'm about to get myself together I might just because my appointments not until three so I'll probably just be cleaning up the house a little bit maybe talking to you guys while I'm doing so but yeah just a little mini vlog but also just the progress really is in this video so yeah let's get it started and also don't let that terrible angle fool you okay I do have a chin. <laughs> I do have a chin, I promise. It's just, you know. <laughs> okay, should we get chin lipo? Nah. I actually was talking to my massage girl, which I love, by the way. And she was telling me the chin is the easiest thing to get rid of because all you have to do is, like, those lymphatic massages. You know what I mean? So once I'm all healed and I have, like, this to not worry about as much, I'm going to, like, just start gua shaing again so that way... The chin matches the body, okay? Okay, so before my appointment, I wanna answer some of the questions I've been getting um, just from like the other apps like TikTok, Instagram, etc. Just some of the questions I've been seeing. And I may have already answered these questions in the other YouTube videos, but it's not gonna hurt to, you know, answer them again. So, anywho, one of the questions I got was, how often do you wear your faha? So up until around seven weeks, which is today for me, they recommend 23 hours a day. And for me personally, by the, I don't know, like fifth week, I mentally was over it. And I, <laughs> I've had a few breakdowns, you know? Like I've mentally just, you know, like, I'm tired of wearing a garment. And, you know, I miss 
not having to wear it. The only thing about not wearing it is that because slowly I need to start not wearing it as much. When I don't wear it, around like the second or third hour of me not wearing it, I start to become sore. So that's why they recommend to slowly start to wear it less because if you go from like wearing it 23 hours a day to like not at all, you're gonna be sore and swollen like all the time. So you have to like slowly get out of wearing it. So I started out with like 22 hours a day and now I'm at um, 20 hours a day. So after today, once they clear me, I'll start taking it down to maybe 19 hours a day. Then I'll go to 16 hours a day, you know what I mean? Because I just wanna slowly start getting back to normalcy of not wearing anything. Um, and that goes with my arm garments too because I did get arm lipo as well. But yeah, you have to wear it 23 hours a day for the first seven weeks and then you can start to slowly get out of it. So someone asked how many massages do they recommend post-op? So no one actually recommended a certain amount to me when I was getting my surgery. If anything, I feel like they... Like we didn't really, to be honest, now that I'm thinking about it, we didn't really talk ab about massages a lot until I started talking about it. So, but every doctor's office is different, you know. When I got my surgery package, which includes like the first garments, three massages, and a checkup or whatever, like you know, a surgery package, like what comes with your surgery, it only included three massages, which would not have been enough for me to get the results I have. So I'm. I think about 15 massages in in the first seven weeks which is a lot but I'll be damned you know what I mean I just really wanted to look really good I've heard them say to other people that you should get between seven and ten massages in the first seven weeks like two a week or three a week whatever how many you can do so I, I would say for the first seven weeks and I keep saying seven weeks in this video because there's two milestone results there's seven week results and then there's three slash four month results. Those two results are where you're gonna see your best self. Like seven weeks is like seven weeks after the surgery and then around three to four months is like final results. So just remember that. But around seven weeks, you would want to have at least like eight to 10 massages in already. Massages can be expensive and that's why I've been telling people throughout this journey, on top of surgery cost, you need to have aftercare cost added onto it at least like one to two thousand extra so if your surgery is a thousand you know what i mean you're gonna need to you know so anyways i personally for the best results i would recommend as much as i've had them, like 15 massages because why not you know what i mean the more you get the better you're gonna feel the better you're gonna look like i feel great after those massages like they're getting that liquid out they're pushing the liquid to the lymph nodes and it just feels amazing and i know a lot of people have a fear this is another question a lot of people are like oh i want to get it but i'm scared of the massages and you know bitchy indie would be like okay don't get it you know what i mean because like i don't want to baby anyone but also realistic indie here to tell you the only two massages that you should be nervous about are the first two and even still i was awake i didn't faint i wasn't screaming in pain i cried you're gonna cry who cares you cry over that man all the time okay but it's not as excruciating as you think like yes yeah, some girls have had horror stories but it just depends who you go to my doctor's office is so careful they treat you so beautifully and like you're their baby like they want the best results for you too so like if something hurts they're not gonna do it if you're uncomfortable they're not gonna do it like they take the time with you so I can't speak for other doctors offices I can't speak for other girls experiences but this experience I've had with my massages has been beautiful I've also been seeing a lot of girlies ask me how long before they can get back to work I don't know what work you do it depends on what career you have etc if you're working from home and you're just sitting at a desk and you're typing you can get back to work in like i'd say five days but if you're very active and you have to walk a lot run a lot do like drive a lot i'd say at least 15 days but that but again that's my experience there are some girls who got lipo and they're like oh yeah i was about to back to work at six days seven days you don't know until you do it it's like a tattoo 
people could ask you a million times oh did it hurt did it hurt and then you could say yes and then they get in the same spot it didn't hurt for them i cannot tell you babe <laughs> but whatever doctor you go to you'll tell them what you do for work and they will recommend how much time you should take off you know what i mean um so i know you guys want the answers from me just because i was like the guinea pig for you guys and you know you're thinking oh like she had what i want done so maybe i can ask her these questions there's certain questions i can answer and some i can't because i just don't know but for me personally in my personal experience i wasn't able to even drive my car until like 15 days after and then still i was i, I was driving and i felt not dizzy but not present like you do have surgery brain after surgery you have surgery brain to where you're like you know like that that saying dumb blonde like that's how you feel like a dumb blonde after surgery you're like how do you break again you know what i mean it was just very strange and i felt winded too it was very hard for me to catch my breath for the first 20 days so i wouldn't recommend working at all for like the, the first 15 days but again it depends on what you do for work what your doctor will tell you etc now today when i go into the doctor's office i'm gonna try to get a video of the doctor explaining this to you but a lot of people are asking me why i didn't need to get a tummy tuck instead of lipo but the way they described it to me before surgery is this so and this is literally genetics and facts this is not tea this is not shade any good surgeon or doctor will tell you this but people of color whether that be black hispanic asian whatever people of color our skin is tighter than people of not color and so when we go in for something that requires our skin to tighten back up or retract or anything it happens very easily that's number one number two the only reason you would need a tummy tuck is if your stomach was literally like hanging over and you're able to like flap it a little bit you know what i mean that is what we call loose skin and that's where they would have to you know cut that skin off and pull your stomach down to give you a new stomach i didn't need that my stomach wasn't flappy my skin is actually very like like good like strong you know what i mean so it really depends on your skin and he made it very clear he he does a beautiful job at skin tightening when it's necessary and i didn't really need much to be honest um obviously i'm going to include photos in this video so you guys can see but i just didn't need it i just didn't need it i could see if again my stomach was like hanging and it was flabby and it like my skin was very tight and even when i would be bloated or something and i sucked my stomach in my stomach gave flat you know what i mean like not as flat but it still gave flat so mostly my stomach was like full of liquid i i do have that thing where i bloat very easily so although my stomach might look huge in the before pictures it really wasn't you know it wasn't that big so i didn't need a tummy tuck and hopefully he'll be able to explain to you guys why um but yeah you you might not even need a tummy tuck you might be qualified for lipo just like me you never know and before we start the day i want to answer one more question i seen so someone said they don't understand the liquid part the drain part like how does the liquid drain out of you so after you get a surgery like lipo or bbl or whatever you have to have drains inserted into you surgically and they have to get rid of the excess liquid that was pumped into you so it's hard to explain but anyways you have drains now there are different types of drains i didn't have the grenade type of drains where like it's a shape of grenade and like the tube and then you see the blood i didn't have that i had little tiny like literally like this tall little tiny drains sticking out of me from all of my incisions and i just wore adult diapers and doggy pads so that way the liquid had somewhere to go and after eight days they took them out there are different drains so depending on what surgery you get is depending on what drains you get the the liquid has to come out <laughs> you're being pumped full of liquid so that way they can get the fat out i don't know how to explain it because i'm not a surgeon but in so many words that's what's happening and 
it has to come out it has to or you're gonna look like that so <laughs> it does have to come out and also after the drains are out and your incisions finally close you still have liquid because the incisions are closed doesn't mean there's no more liquid there is still liquid I still have liquid uh, in my back and on my sides it's very minimal very tiny but there is liquid you always create lymphatic liquid even day to day even without surgery you have lymphatic liquid that's why lymphatic massages are offered to people with or without surgery because they help tremendously that's why when you gua sha and your chin looks a lot smaller this is all liquid literally so you move it and you're draining it right here and it just drains out so when you're getting your massages after your surgery and the drains are no longer there and your incisions are closed where does the liquid go it comes out through your pee through your sweat and your armpits and through your breath so every time i'm talking there is a liquid coming out of my breath that i can't see so through your pee and your armpits and sweating and through your mouth all of that lymphatic liquid that's all up in you is coming out so that's why when I get my arm massages, they massage, massage, and bring it up to my armpit. Or when I get my torso massage, they massage, massage, and bring it down towards where I would pee, um, etc. So that's what a lymphatic massage is after surgery, and that's how you continue to move the liquid and get it out. All right, babe, so I was running late, so I didn't get a chance to record myself getting ready, but anywho, on the way to the doctor's office yeah I'm just so excited I'm just so excited because and right now I'm not wearing any of my garments by the way it feels weird it always feels weird when I don't wear them but um I'm excited just to know that I am doing okay I did everything I was supposed to in these first seven weeks and that I'm looking great you know I just want to hear those words and I feel like that's the purpose of this appointment you know just letting me know like your seven weeks your first seven weeks went great you look great you're clear to do this 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 and yeah so that'll be the appointment for today I believe and then obviously I again want to get Dr. Costa on the camera and just have him like answering some questions for you guys as well because I feel like even though you guys are asking me these questions, it always feels good when a professional reiterates what I'm saying as well, just so you know, like, these are facts. So it'll be nice um, for you guys to see him and hear him say what he wants to say. But anyways, on the way. Oh. <laughs> you scared me. I'm just putting it all tested. <laughs> Don't um, move it. Okay. So the doc is about to come in so we can ask some questions. This is how we're looking. The back looks really good. See that coming in? A little bit of fluid right there, but that'll go away. Side. The arms we're still working on, but yeah, everything's looking good, y'all. It's, it's hard to like realize that it's only been seven weeks, but it feels like eternity. Yeah, I don't know why, but that looks good. These feel like you still have just a tad of small like, yeah. like on the arms, and mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, how are you feeling? Uh, okay. Yeah. Everything looks amazing. This is my doctor, Dr. Costa. Hi. And he did all of this amazing work. So I want to ask him some questions that you guys are asking me and also just talk about what I got done and have him explain it in the best terms so that you know exactly what to ask for when you come in for a consultation. So we did our 360 liposuction um, and you were a really good candidate for it because you had really, really good skin quality. Um, you weren't drastically overweight, you live relatively healthy, so the idea was to, you know, you had a nice foundation for everything. So we just wanted to get some of that excess fat out, but then also really try and shape, and shape, uh, shape, shape the stomach in a natural way so it doesn't look fake or anything, but also like really bring your waist in and um, create those curves in the right, in the right places. So, um, so you were, you were a great candidate for that procedure. We also did the arms because there was some, um, some excess, you know, there and we wanted everything to kind of match and make sense. And you're only, we're only at seven weeks out um, and you are healing up beautifully. There's a difference between traditional lipo and the lipo you do. So I want to let them know just the slight difference and if they're a good candidate for that. So traditional liposuction is kind of 
what we were doing 20, 30 years ago. And really the focus was more on like debulking and just like removing fat, right? And um, what's really evolved and changed um, over the last decade, really just more of the, the sculpturing aspect of it um, and more of the shaping aspect of it to um, highlight patient's natural anatomy and that we can actually use fat to our advantage um, by, by leaving it in certain places and taking it in certain places, um, we can really sculpt someone to just enhance like what they already have. And we have a lot of technology now that we use to help assist with that, like Vaser, like um, Renuvion. Uh, these are technologies that just help uh, us as the surgeons to remove the fat um, and get the results that we like. But ultimately it's, it's like, uh, you know going looking for like an art piece or something right like it's all about like the artist who's doing it it's all, it's not about the the technology that they use it's about the person who is holding the, the liposuction is, yeah. yeah and like what they're doing so you know what what i always ask my patients to do is i say like you know for any surgery you want to look at their website look make sure that they have lots of photos and see what sort of results they kind of consistently get. And if their aesthetic matches like what you're looking for, then you're probably gonna be like pretty happy with them. So I wanna talk about the possibility of gaining the weight back in the places that you have had lipo and how easy or hard that would be for someone. Yeah, so this is a very common question. It's something I've even talked about. Like, you know, is it is it a myth like that you, once you get liposuction, like you can't gain the weight back or the fat back or are you gonna put fat like other places? Mm -hmm. And the answer is that it is absolutely true that like, if you are not living a healthy lifestyle and you're using like a liposuction procedure as a way to like lose weight, if you're not um, living healthy, like you're going to continue to put fat on and um, uh, it's going to go to those places where you still have fat cells. So, mm -hmm. so to like kind of put it all together, the, the fat cells we removed are gone, right. okay? So like if we removed a lot of them, you know, in, in your torso, and that, which is what really snatched your waist in, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we did not remove the fat cells in other parts like your legs and, you know, your thighs and stuff. So like if you do gain weight or something, like that, that fat is going to likely go to those places because you already have those fat cells, those storage, fat cells are just big storage containers. Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to store it in those locations. So another question that I get is going back to work, obviously after liposuction, yeah. it, I think it depends on what they do for work, honestly, but a lot of people are like, oh, like does it take months to go back to work or weeks? It's definitely like dependent on what you do for work yeah. and it's gonna be just dependent on what what surgery you had done. Yeah. Um, talking specifically about like body contouring and liposuction, um, it's not abnormal for patients who maybe like have more of a, like a sedentary job, like sitting at a desk or something, right. uh, you know, if they, if they had a procedure on a Monday, like being able to go back to work the next Monday. Yeah. And um, I, you know, it doesn't mean that like you're back to normal and everything's like perfect, but usually you're, uh, you know, you're comfortable enough and, you know, ibuprofen, Tylenol, all that kind of thing. And you can focus enough to do your, do your job. I have had patients go back to work as early as two days after surgery, which is crazy, which is crazy I think. <laughs> um, but you know, like certain people are just very, very motivated, you yeah. know? Um, I, I like to tell patients to take a week off for a couple of reasons. One, when you take that week off, it really lets you just focus on your health. It lets you focus on your nutrition. Um, it lets you uh, give you time to get some, at least a few lymphatic massages uh, because in those first couple of weeks, those are very, very crucial mm -hmm. for, I think, um, just the overall contour and really helping to get your swelling down. So by having that time off, it lets you do these other things, which I think will ultimately help set you up for success. What was like the first day, the first second day? Like, yeah. what was that like for you? So the actual day of the surgery, you don't feel anything. Like you might feel groggy or tired or sleepy when you wake numb, up. Though. Yeah, yeah. But you're numb, so the numbing is still in your body, so you're not gonna feel anything. I think the first maybe two to five days is where it really starts to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And the only discomfort that I really had, it wasn't really the surgery points, it was more so the drains. Mm -hmm. I feel like the drains, when I sat down really low or got back up, it was like maybe a burning sensation. Okay. But that could be different for everyone, you know? Maybe that was just my experience. Yeah, but of course. But yeah, as I'm... far as the actual like point of surgery, like the torso and the arms, 
it wasn't really a pain. It might have been a soreness. Like, like I was told, like, if you go to the gym and the next day you work out and you're sore, that's literally how it felt. Yeah. So I feel like it's very tolerable. And Good. I think that's why I was interested in the surgery because I felt that pain before. It wasn't really a big deal to me. And here I am seven weeks later and I feel fine. Yeah, no, that's that's good to hear because like I that's mostly what I tell patients, but it's good to hear it come out of your mouth. Yeah. Like of, like that was your experience too, because um, you know, I I to like the reality is is it is surgery. Mm -hmm. Um and you are going to be sore for a few days. Yes. And um and especially like with the liposuction that I do, like I'm very aggressive, like which you know means that it you, you may be sore for a little bit. Yeah. Um, that being said, patients do go back to work at a week. Patients uh, do recover quickly. If we did everything like this, and your biggest complaint was like, oh, like where the stitch was right. from the drain, like that's what kind of bugged you. Yeah. That means we did a good job, yeah. I think, because uh, it's it's not too bad now. But I never tell anyone like, oh, it's it's you know, there's no pain, like. That's not that's not true. That's I not mean, true. like, there's definitely like a recovery phase, and um, and you know, we, you know, that our office gives a whole uh, spectrum of different medications to yeah. treat pain. Mm -hmm. um, so the goal with our our pain regimen is to treat pain on multiple different pathways uh, that are not opiate. So that way, like, you're not, you know pushing narcotics like yeah. into your body and um, we're treating pain on all these other pathways to, to keep you as comfortable as possible and there's some of that other medication available if you need it but um, most people usually don't even take it if they do they take it the first day and that's about yeah. it is getting the lymphatic massages a is it even necessary um, is it worth like the money is it part of like is it really necessary to do it and uh, you know can I still get a good result if I don't do it right and and, I, and those are like very fair questions like to ask because like obviously they take time they take money but um, the reason I like recommend doing them for patients is because like I, I I've seen it in my own patients like uh, it overall enhances results it gets swelling down faster mm -hmm. it's like why you look like this at seven weeks yeah. instead of like and we're we're not even halfway through the healing yeah. process the the massages really play a key part in that for sure um and uh you know and, and people always are asking me like uh no matter what surgery they do it's they, they want to be involved in their treatment it's like what can i do to help my results and help my healing and i think like when it comes to uh doing liposuction like there's no question, like there's no doubt, I should say that um, that the lymphatic massages really do help yes. with the overall healing stuff. When I was fresh out of surgery, I was scared like any normal person would be just to even be touched at first because I didn't really know what to expect. But when I went in for my first few massages, it actually made me feel better because you have so much liquid just sitting and building up that when yeah. it's released, you feel so much better afterwards. Like it might be a little pressure and it might be a little emotional, even during the first few massages. Like I just mm -hmm. cried because it's a vulnerable state, not because it's painful, but just because you're fresh out of surgery and you're standing there, you know, half naked in front yeah. of someone who's, you know, there to massage you. So it's a little vulnerable, but other than that, there's really no pain. And I don't think people should be afraid of them. I think they should be excited to get them because Again, I wouldn't look like this in seven weeks if I didn't get those massages. And I feel like for the best results, you should be getting at least two to three a week just because yeah, it's going to feel uncomfortable if you're like sitting around or even at work and you just have that liquid just there. You have to massage it out. You have to get it out because if not, it might even cause fibrosis or anything that could result in like hardness. And I feel like if you're massaging it, it's going to equate to you like getting softer quicker and like a better result as far as like contour too. All right, y'all. About to head out. All right, babe. So I'm on my way to grab some food. And then again, I want to include some before and after in progress photos in this video. So I'll talk you guys through that as well. Just you know telling you how I felt during the process of each picture and so you guys can just get a you know gist of how my first seven weeks has been going all right y'all so I just ate and like you've seen in the video I'm super excited that Dr. Costa was able to answer <laughs> all of those questions 
but I am going to also just tell you guys my experience and you know put in some pictures in here so you guys can see what I looked like throughout this entire process because <laughs> it it was like interesting you know like I'm looking back at the before and after photos and obviously the progress photos and it's just kind of shocking <laughs> very shocking to see myself just I don't know like just seeing your body like contort and like <laughs> be so weirdly shaped for a while and then it starts to look beautiful and you're like what fucking sorcery is this like it's fucking insane anyways i'm going to insert some pics explain them and then yeah just talk a little bit more and let you guys know how my experience went okay so let's get into these progress photos and before i show my before photos if you talk shit about my before photos you're racist I don't care. You're racist as fuck <laughs> because they were bad, okay? But when I do show the before photos, you will see why I decided to get lipo because your girl was struggling, okay? Anywho, so let's start out strong. So I don't, I tried to find pictures like from day one to day seven. I probably wasn't taking any because I was probably loopy as hell and out of it and on pain medication. Anyways, this is day eight compared to day 11. This is why I say it is a process because, ooh, look at day eight. Ooh, child, day eight just looks like, what the, like, it looks like I have an alien growing inside me. You know what I mean? It just looks crazy. I was so scared. I was just, I was, I was honestly sad looking at this. I was like, oh my God, what did I do? But I went in for my first massage after, no, actually my first massage was, before day eight maybe I don't know I can't remember but anyways day 11 was like two massages in I think and I was like okay okay yes we're we're starting to finally see that I'm not crazy and that I went to the right person because after day 11 like god damn it looks amazing already so these pictures right here are actually a really good example of just the fact that every single day you will look different some days you'll look better some days you'll look more like swollen or bloated or etc and mind you ladies hello are cycles so while i'm recovering from lipo i'm also getting my cycle so there are days where i'm taking these progress photos you will see that i look a little more bloated than the day before okay that makes sense right 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 and also you know if like i skip a massage like for like three days or something, like say they couldn't get me on the schedule or something, again, you'll be a little more swollen. So day 15, 19, and 24, day 15, I look a little more snatched than day 24, just because on day 24, I was probably bloated. I probably just ate or I probably was a little swollen. So just keep all this in mind. If you are considering something like this, like don't beat yourself up about it because every single day you will look different. So around the one month mark is where I really started to see the side of my stomach start to come in more um and also again during this you are sizing down your fajas ladies so you start with one size you outgrow it quickly because of the massages they are draining you of all that liquid so you're getting smaller and smaller and smaller so by day like 30 i was on like my fourth faja because i just kept you know, getting smaller. I started out with like a medium, I think, and now I'm in like an extra small. But um, yeah, so you start to slowly see the curve of the side of my waist and stomach start to come in right here. And the lines on day 36 are just like the imprints from my faha. But on day 33, you can kind of see where the doctor's contour is starting to show a little bit. But in three months, it will look so different from all of these photos. I just want you guys to keep all of this in mind while watching this. Here is a closer look at what I'm kind of looking like now. So day 43, I look, I'll say this, day 43, I look fucking amazing. <laughs> I think that was just a really good day for me. Day 47, again, I probably was bloated or something. Day 49 is like a good in between the two. So again, just keep all that in mind. And I'm, I think I'm like 50 something, like maybe date, like, I don't know. I'm like 53 days out now. So yeah, this is basically how I'm looking about now. And also I will include a video of today, but yeah, we're looking good. 
we're looking good, y'all. And again, you don't see final results for around three to four months. So this isn't even how I'm going to look at the end of this, y'all. This just is like now. So if you can hold out for 50 days <laughs> just to look snatched, okay, it's worth it to me. But anyways, I'm going to show you guys my arms next. Okay, so I wasn't really taking a lot of progress photos with my arms because Oh, child, the arms take the longest, the longest to see results, y'all. Like, oh my God. And again, it's because we're constantly using them. You use our arms all day, every day. So granted, there is a reason. But as you can see in the before photo, I had just a lot of extra fat, especially near my elbow. You see that little pocket of fat right there and going up towards my armpit. So 30 days out, I don't know, like around 30 days, the only difference I had seen was like on my elbow, there wasn't like that fat kind of like hanging over anymore. So I was happy about that. But I really didn't start seeing good results until recently, to be honest. Like, yes, on day 32, it does look better. But wait until you see these next progress photos because my arms look amazing right now. Okay, so even day 47, day 49, you're still seeing some lumpiness um, on the back of the arm. And, you know, it. it's hard to tell that it is getting better. Like I said, it just takes so long. But day 49 from like day 30 is like night and day. Um, the only thing, and I talked to the doctor about this today, actually, the only thing that I was confused about is the little groove that's in the arm and I forgot that <laughs> under our fat we have muscle so <laughs> there will be like little grooves that are naturally on your arm like you see that little groove going towards the words at the uh, bottom of the picture that is supposed to be there so the arms are starting to slowly look better and I am starting to finally see the big picture with the arms because I, I'll tell you the first 30 days I was sad I was like, damn, did I just spend this extra money on arm lipo for no reason? And then you just, you're just patient and you finally start to see it and you're like, okay, okay, let me shut the fuck up because this shit is looking good. Now, I don't want to hear y'all say nothing, nothing about the picture on the left. <laughs> I don't want to hear y'all say nothing. Okay. Yes, I was sucking it in, in my pictures. And yes, I was Photoshopping, ho. Because look at this. <laughs> and it, it's the cap that I'm wearing on the top. Oh, my God. But anyways, now y'all see. Everyone's like, well, oh, you're so snatched. You don't need it. Oh, your body's perfect. You don't need it. Oh, or are you just being lied to by me because I'm sucking it in in every picture and video and then I'm photoshopping as well? Yeah, you were bamboozled. Okay. But now, as you see on the right, this is from today. We no longer have to. <laughs> Clock it. We no longer have to, baby. This is just me. This is me on the wake up now, honey. Okay, get into it. Get into the tea. And okay, again, I only had lipo 360. I promise, I swear to God, me and the doctor would never lie to y'all. And plus, I ain't had the money for a BBL. But as you can see, he takes the back fat and literally on the side of your back contours the fat you already have to make your hips look bigger look how good my ass looks y'all look i ain't need a bb some g girls this is sometimes you don't need a fucking bbl sometimes you just need lipo <laughs> okay sometimes you just need lipo so you know we're looking fucking amazing we're looking amazing. I look like a whole different person, y'all. I look completely different. And I'm fucking in love with these results. So here's... I'm, tr I'm trying to compare the same angles for you guys. Left is before, obviously. And right is from today. As you can see, that arm on the right is looking good. Okay? The arms are looking good. Like I said, they're starting to get there. And again, a lot of people were asking me if like lipo changes your tattoos or something. No. No, my tattoo on my stomach still looks the same. Belly button is still the same. Again, I get that question a lot. Oh, is it going to change your belly button? No. He did say today the only time he's worried about a belly button is if 
there's like a lot of fat like hanging over the belly button, which obviously I didn't have. So I didn't have to worry about a lot of those things that you guys might be worried about. And maybe that's why you're asking me. But again, it's just going to take a consultation. It's going to take you going in person to talk to a doctor about it because I can't answer certain questions. But here is before and after on the same angle. Again, we're looking good. And here is a 360 video from today's appointment. Again, again, eating you bitches up. Eating you bitches up. Yeah, it took a few thousand dollars to do it. <laughs> but again, I'm in love with these seven-week results, y'all. We got like a month and a half, two months to go until we see final results. And I'm just going to keep doing what I was doing and getting my massages, putting on my faha. And we'll see what I look like from today until then. Okay, I'm back in my pajamas for the conclusion of this. So don't judge me. Anyways, but so let's talk about my whole experience with lipo and if I would recommend, if I would do it again, if I would change anything, etc. We are at the seven week mark, which is a milestone. And then three to four months like maybe three and a half months is another milestone and then after the three or four month milestone that's basically it that's usually how you'll look moving forward so yeah i was super excited about today because we're seven weeks in and um yeah it's it's been a journey but let's talk about how I feel about it, if I would do again, etc. so going into this i am just like you or anyone else where i had some fears, some normal fears, some irrational fears. I tell people all the time, if I really, really want something, I just do it. And I kind of just look past the fears because that's the thing with fear. Like it's just a something. It's not always reality. It's not always factual. And if you do it, and then that scary thing didn't happen, you'll be so proud of yourself. So that's kind of how I feel like I was really scared as you guys know one of my irrational or even rational fears is anesthesia and i i just wanted this for me so bad that i did it even with the fear you know and obviously i explain my reasonings for wanting to get lipo in another video prior to this if you haven't watched it go watch it because i'm not going to re-explain my reasons in this video but the reasons and the wants outweighed the fear so i was able to do it also when it comes to like the other fears as far as like how it'll turn out how it'll look the massages hurting all those things that a lot of people have been asking me about this is why i chose the doctor i chose and no, this isn't promo. No, this isn't like me trying to get other people to go to him. This is literally me saying I pay for what I get. I go to a certain nail tick because I like how my nails look. I go to a certain lash tick because I like how she does the best lashes. Why wouldn't you apply the same method to your doctor? If you want the best, you go to the best. So I wasn't really nervous about how my results would turn out because I've seen his results. And I seen what he can do and what he's capable of and I trusted him. So even though when we're looking at those progress photos, you're like, girl, day eight. <laughs> On day eight, y'all, I was like, what the fuck did I just do to myself? But we're sitting here week seven and we're just like, the way you're so motherfucking snap, you know what I mean? So I trusted him. I trusted myself. I trusted God and I knew that everything would be fine. And if it wasn't fine, these are things that are fixable. Like I, it was never really a fear that things wouldn't turn out how I wanted them to because again, I was going to one of the best. So I knew that there wouldn't really be any, like anything bad that would happen. So I had that in the back of my mind. I did it. I'm alive. I survived. I didn't die <laughs> and I'm looking great. So I definitely would do it again. I don't regret doing it. The only, okay, I will say the only thing that I may or may not have did but I'm still kind of more so on still would have did is maybe I would do the lipo 360 and arm lipo separately just because in the beginning it was really hard for me because I couldn't use my arms I couldn't put weight on my arms to lift myself out of bed or whatever you know what I mean so I had to roll out of bed but it's fine now 
but maybe if I did do it again I might have like did one and then the other after I don't know but it's fine again I didn't die so <laughs> I, I think that I would still probably do it the same way to be honest because it turned out okay you know so yes I would do it again do I recommend it if it's genuinely something you truly truly want and the only thing that's stopping you is the fears that it might hurt or you might be in pain or the massages or whatever do it do it because as you heard in those videos like everything looks amazing we're at week seven the massages are so fucking important literally like i wouldn't look how i look without those massages and they didn't hurt and the surgery itself didn't hurt so if those are the only things stopping you from doing it do it but if you want to do it just because you see other people doing it don't do it literally do it for you and don't do it for a man or for a female just literally like let this be something you want to do for you and then do it because otherwise you might regret it you might have regrets and it is a long journey like i'm still sensitive in areas to the touch i'm still very vulnerable feeling i still have to compress so it's a long journey so if you're not willing to put in the time to take time off to really sit with yourself and heal then don't do it because it is something that isn't all the way done overnight like it takes months and months so for those reasons you know i feel like it should be a you decision and not something for other people so if there are any more questions concerns even if they're random just leave them in the comments below because i am here for you i guess i was the guinea pig in all this because a lot of people are like oh i really want it or i've been wanting it for a while and then you know they ask their questions so i'll be that for you <laughs> i'll be your vessel you know but again i survived i'm not in any pain i think honestly the real discomfort or pain which you want to call it ended on like day for me personally for me personally you're different than me but my discomfort and stuff was gone by like day 10 11 i was because i had just got my drains out on day eight so a few days after the drains are out i was like okay i don't really feel much discomfort or pain anymore as far as soreness you're gonna have soreness because you are sore even once the bruising which was very minimal for me because i did the arnica method or whatever but even once the outside bruising is gone internally you are still bruised so you will still be sore even two weeks three weeks four weeks after i still have some soreness in my arms and i'm seven weeks post-op so soreness will be there but as far as like actual pain and like a level of discomfort that is uncomfortable um, mine stopped around like day 10 day 11 so if you can go a safe 15 days just being a little uncomfortable sore and swollen then it's worth it you know what i mean but anyways hope you enjoyed this video hope this was very informational for you guys i will of course update you around the three and a half four month mark because those will be like the best results and again when you see me posting pictures online etc just know i am not fully healed clock it okay i had like some negative nancy's talking about oh like i can tell you're still editing your pictures yes bitch because we ain't there yet <laughs> we're not there yet like i still have months i still have at least two months so it's like yes okay yes these pictures are gonna eat regardless but anyways just know i'm not even there yet so if this is something that you are interested in just know it does take some time it's a whole process and that's why i started this video series and i wanted to be transparent with you guys because i knew that this whole entire time i would not have been able to not let you know you would have known something was up you know what i mean so anyways glad you're here with me glad you stuck out all this time with me through this journey through this process and i hope that you follow along throughout the rest so till next time indie team love you so much <laughs>